something that might surprise people, the next speaker has been to Burning Man two and a half times. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what the half is, but I'm going to have him explain it at Piper Down later. Yeah, he writes for the City Weekly, Utah CEO Magazine, and Blurred Online, and he's also an amateur theoretical physicist, and he's here to tell us about time, the multiverse, and nothing in particular. <laughs> Brian Staker. Time, time is becoming the most valuable commodity instead of money. Time is the most awkward invention as it constricts and regulates our behavior like nothing else. Who wouldn't like to be rid of time for good? But what is time? Time was invented to keep everything com from happening at once, Einstein said. Is time just a function of narrative storytelling, of story problems the like of two trains traveling at different speeds used to demonstrate his relativity theory? But time seems to be speeding up with all the technological innovations taking place. If Kurzweil's hypothesis of the singularity is true, the rate of technological advance is ex increasing exponentially, we will reach a point where we make a quantum leap into a completely new phase of evolution, a transhuman condition. But what if time itself is speeding up, a co-function of space and energy oscillating at a higher and higher rate? Eventually, time is going to seize up, stop completely. The long tail of railroad cars will collapse into the engine of this locomotive, a train wreck of thought. So we have imagined the mythologies of 2012, the apocalypse, the subgenius X day, or whatever you want to call it, a cosmic analogy for the death of the individual. The notion of physical space in the sense of discrete objects was invented to keep collisions from happening on the atomic and political levels. Conflicts are always a part of any narrative, but they have to be kept to a limited scale or else they may expand to a global level and engulf us. We like to keep volatile regions at a safe distance, but what will happen to space when time collapses? How can we have a temporal experience? Just like atoms that comprise physical objects, the discrete units of time have non-temporal segments that keep them from colliding to maintain their syntax. Let's all take a moment. Did you see it? You totally missed it. Still, you are breathing in tiny particles of dust, remnants of moments dead and gone. Time and space are both arbitrary measurements. For example, this presentation is arbitrar arbitrarily divided into 15-second segments. The second itself only has meaning in comparison to the tick of a clock or other object constructed under phenomenological variances. You can only look backwards since, like Twitter, everything is in motion, fluid. You can only perceive events that just happened. You're, bl you're moving blindly into the future, which doesn't exist, and when it does, almost instantly becomes the past. You're watching the story of your life go by. Try to remain in the present. You can't. The acceleration is making this even more difficult. But at the moment of impact, many temporal branches will break off, which had previously run parallel. Alternate universes, really multiverses, in which we also exist, or rather insist, already. Layers that accumulate into yourself as an accretion, an assemblage. The world and ourselves are becoming denatured, and with it, time will become detached from the physical world. As we start to migrate into outer space and make the transition from carbon-based to silicon-based life forms, the temporal rhythms that previously governed our experience will no longer be present. Seasons, etc. Instead of these analog rhythms, the artificial cadences of the machine, which aren't automatic, but can be altered to create many different allocations of energy. Many moments will occur simultaneously, and time as we know it will disappear. Like cable TV, you will be able to experience whatever time you want on demand. Your temporal experience is becoming like episodic TV. And with it, time, space is becoming telematic as well. As the fire sign theater once asked, how can you be in two places at once when you're not anywhere at all? You don't exist until you've scripted yourself into being. It's as ludicrous to insist that time is a linear phenomena as it is to only use the railroad as a means of conveyance, moving in one direction on a predetermined track rather than an airplane which can go wherever it wants in three-dimensional space. Only there are many more than three or even four dimensions. Nothing really exists in the sense of externally articulated objects. Everything only exists in relation to other things, their vibrational energy. Or else nothing is alive and we wander through a world of empty shells, the skins of things that somehow seem animated as you or I, which we try to investigate, to comprehend and understand, but like digging a hole in the subatomic dirt, all we find is more dirt. Black holes in 
time as well as space where temporal units don't exist like their spatial counterparts in which no physical objects can exist move like a circular pool in a stream, the eye of the storm of being. You can be outside of time or perhaps more properly inside it, like awkward interludes in a story. These will grow exponentially until they encompass everything, including you and the multiverses that comprise your mind. Till that which has already happened happens, you will leave this room at the end of the evening. Go back to your previously scheduled lives, which are already in progress. You will forget we ever had this conversation.